The practice uh, drawing requires you to just look at the still life and allow your eye to follow around the contours and at the same time your pencil is following what your eye sees without actually looking at the page. So obviously when you finally look at what you've done it will seem perhaps a little bit out but you would have understood clearly what the contours are and this enables you to not confuse what you know about a three-dimensional object to how you're going to draw it on a flat 2D surface. Planning out the real drawing requires you to use simple geometric shapes, so circles, ovals, rhomboids, to represent parts of the objects that you see through what you've understood through your practice um, contour drawing. Once you have used your basic geometric shapes to set out the scale of the drawing and the main shapes, you're going to gradually go back around the whole of the contours and add more detail and begin to pay attention to the in-between spaces as well as the actual contour of the object. Any curved lines look for the point of most change and tend to draw the curves as a series of straight lines that fit together to in the end describe the curve. I've pointed these ideas out with the arrows that I've added to the drawing. Obviously you don't need to add the arrows. What we've looked at up until now is the outside contours. Now what we need to do is draw lines that represent the contours across the objects. This is called cross contour and quite often if it's a, a rounded object they've got to be curved lines and if it's a, a square object it will have some kind of perspective on the lines. These lines will obviously help to describe the 3D idea of the objects that you're looking at. In the book, Art, the Whole Story, study the chapter on post-impressionism, page 328 to 337. In particular, pay attention to the works about pointillism because we're going to use this technique with watercolour. The cross contour lines act as a guide for the direction of your brush strokes. And each brush stroke should really be kept to the size of the small shapes created by the two different directions of the cross contour lines. Mix and change your colours to represent whether it appears to be a warm colour or a cold colour, a more pure colour or more of a tertiary version of the colour. Once you have laid down all the different colours that you have noticed respecting the cross contour lines with the brush strokes to create a sense of roundedness or angularness depending on your objects, you can then review the lights and shadows and put larger washes of shadow colour to adjust the correct sense of light and dark. You can see that a paper that is really meant for drawing tends to buckle when you put um, watery paints onto it, but eventually it will dry reasonably flat. But of course, it does mean that it's difficult to do large washes. So in fact, cheap paper, it's better this pointillist watercolor technique. Now re-listen to the video and pause and do each stage bit by bit.